Jaffney Gray is back in the house, woo -woo. and uh, we're, we're getting to learn a lot about Jaffney. Oh, it's yeah. like riding a bike as she <laughs> makes her return back. Good Monday morning. It mm -hmm. is August 5th. Welcome back, Jaffney. Hey, I'm glad to be back, man. I'm happy to be back with you guys, and thank you so much for waking up with us. Right Having a good time on this August 5th. Back to school for a couple people. Yes, definitely mm -hmm. back to school, and yep. of course, we're going to get to talk with Jaffney a little bit. I know it took you a ways to get back yeah. to San Antonio over the weekend, but you were here. You were with us. We were, we were here. I was watching the whole time, and I'm just like, I'm over there looking like a little grandmammy because I was like, this is the cutest I've ever looked in, like, it feels like 48 hours, which is, technically yeah. it is, but yeah. either way, glad to be back. Well, we're thankful to have you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Glad you're here safe, and uh, glad you're here with us on GMSA. Mm -hmm. And she's been singing for us throughout the <laughs> yes, morning. Yes. Hey, you know what? Uh, before we get to weather, obviously, Justin standing by with some uh, developments out yeah. there in the tropics. We yep. do, of course, want to talk about back to school. That mm -hmm. is pretty crazy that we we are already here. We are, definitely. It is that time of year again, back to school season. And for the kiddos out there in Lavernia ISD, today is the first day of going back. Mm -hmm. Our very own Devin Carb outside of Lavernia Primary School before the doors open with everything parents need to know. Devin, he's coming up later on. Okay, yes. they just told us in the air. <laughs> right there, with that being said, uh, yo, no, <laughs> they got up those yeah. kids that are going back. They got to wear those shorts and stuff, though, right? It's true. It's going to be hot today. <laughs> And we're going to see a lot of heat this week. So mm -hmm. all the kids that are going back, just, you know, be prepared. Not only this week, but probably next mm -hmm. week, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Earlier, we mm -hmm. saw that Devin was out there, and uh, they had some music going yeah, on there. It looked like they were going right. to have a lot of back-to-school, <laughs> kind of meet and greet the parents and the kiddos. and all. Of I did see one thing where it said sort of like the, the tardy. Don't be late for yeah. You definitely do not want to be late uh, for your first day of school out there. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking to my daughter specifically, but continue. <laughs> Uh, not only Laverne ISD, we're also keeping an eye on Northside ISD teachers gathering at Brandeis High School this morning to get ready for the first day of class. Northside ISD says that 750 brand new or new to the district teachers are attending two days of orientation before school starts on Northside ISD in just a couple of weeks. And again, class starting there August 19th. That is going to be exactly two weeks from right now. So Jaffney's coming back right in time yeah. for back to school. School and ISD says that some of the new teachers are from as far away as California, Florida, Wisconsin, and Virginia. So the first day of school is still a few days away for most kids in our area, though, and getting your students ready for the new year is easier said than done. We know how that is. But if you need help with school supplies, KSAC, catch your back, scan the QR code that you see right there on the bottom of your screen. We got an entire web article dedicated to the back to school events and giveaways happening right now until your child's first day of school. Very exciting time. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And in case you're wondering when tax free weekend is, get this, it's this weekend, <laughs> August the 9th through 11th. So get to shopping in while you can. Educator of the and here we go. Yes. We also want to give love to all of our teachers and educators out there. We're continuing our Educator of the Month nominations for this upcoming school year. Each month, one special educator will be recognized for the work that he or she does. Got to show some love to the teachers out there. They're also going to get this a $500 Visa gift card from First Smart Credit Union. And this isn't just for teachers. It could be a bus driver that's made a difference or a custodian worker, cafeteria worker, anyone who's making a difference at your school. All you got to do, y'all, scan the QR code that you see on your screen to nominate your favorite educator for a chance to win out yeah. there. Do you have a favorite teacher, Jack? You know, I, I think all of them are soldiers because <laughs> when you look at today's yes. <laughs> kiddos and stuff, uh -huh. man, the stuff that they have to deal with, mm -hmm. I take my hat off to them. But if I had one, it would be, uh, his name is Colonel Cooper, Colonel Stanley Ooh, Cooper. Okay. In Osceola High School, I was in junior ROCC as the okay. commander, and nice. he was a pretty fun dude. So Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Colonel Cooper, right? <laughs> yes. There we go. All right, guys. Quick check of our roads right now, and things looking great. Again, uh, hey, you take it advantage still of this uh, back to school before we get out there. So uh, now we're taking a look at 281 Marshall Road on the north side. Traffic moving pretty good right there. So we are just going to give you a quick look at drive cam right now as we take a look out there. So Alex is uh, it looks like he might be out at the scene of something. So we'll hmm. check in with him in just a little bit. But of course, we do have some developments in weather as well. Huh, you that's right, RJ. Uh, Debbie making landfall as we speak. I'm going to show you that in just a second. First, we got a great photo from yesterday. Yesterday was a busy day west of San Antonio. We had showers and storms develop, and we actually 
Uh, did see some lightning and thunder, some good heavy rain in spots. This is from Rudy out in Hondo. He shows that shower <coughs> or thunderstorm, I guess we should call it, there north of Hondo. Beautiful, beautiful shot in the rain. Well, we love it. See the, the farmland there in the, uh, the foreground. Uh, they're loving the rain, too. It's been, a, it's been a good stretch, but it's all kind of coming to an end because we're going to see a lot of heat this week in less than the way of rain. Not the case out in Florida. They're getting a ton of rain right now. Debbie has officially made landfall. We just got word from the Hurricane Center. And you can see the eye crossing over the shoreline right there. So uh, now that it has officially made rain, uh, landfall, it's going to start to weaken a little bit, but not before dropping just a ton of rain. And I mean a lot of rain for parts of Florida, Georgia, uh, South Carolina. Uh, this is going to be a big problem the next few days as this storm system stalls a little bit. We don't feel any effects from Debbie. It is all heat here. Uh, by noontime today, we're up around 90. We top out at 98, which is uh, about where we've been last few days. Heat index will be anywhere from 100 to 103, but it gets hotter from here. We're going to see the heat really start to crank up, uh, especially by the end of the week, guys. Mm. All right, man. Not, Something you definitely gonna be about that. Yeah. <laughs> now, right now, we're going to take a live this. look yeah. right here. This is Clearwater Beach, Florida. As Justin said, tracking Hurricane Debbie. This officially made landfall this morning. Forecasted at the National Hurricane Center say that the storm now has maximum sustained winds of, get this, 75 to 80 miles per hour. Now, the storm has already soaked much of Florida's Gulf Coast with the rain and flooding. Forecasters warn that it will likely also hit the Atlantic coast of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina with rain. Catastrophic flooding is also expected in some areas. Debbie is the fourth named storm of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Mm, you already see those tree, those trees swaying yeah. in the background there this and hopefully those folks are getting ready. Yes, very much hunkering so. down a little bit there. All right, time now. Jaffney is back y'all 607 <laughs> 79 degrees outside. So to come, we're going 101 exclusively with Spurs Lantern Sean Elliott after a recent health scare. Why his Apple watch may have saved his life. Yes, you guys will definitely love that story. A lot of people, Sean Elliott, beloved, as we take a look at live cam out there in traffic, moving along pretty good at our airport shot, but we will check in with Alex. We saw he may have been at the scene of something earlier. We'll check in with him. We've got a lot going on on your Monday morning. Stay with us, y'all. Welcome back. It is now 611. Thank you guys very much for starting your day with yes. us, your week with us. Waking Jackie up. Jackie is back. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, she's got us going on a Monday morning so far. So we, of course, are welcoming Jaff back to Good Morning San Antonio as well. Last week, Jaff, we asked a series of questions yep. about you. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're asking our folks, and we are also getting some answers this morning. One of the questions here that we asked was, where will be the first place that Jaffney visits when she returns to San Antonio? Uh -huh. All right, here oh, were yeah. some of the choices that we had. H-E-B, mm -hmm. the Alamo, and the Pearl. The folks said 48% H-E-B. Right, but get this, the answer ah. is... Drum roll. Now one of them, because get this. Okay, so this is what had happened. I've been just super busy yeah. with moving back and forth, yeah. uh -huh. and I just haven't had a chance to, but I will say that my first, I, I, I associate this with Texas, so I would mm -hmm. experience, I think, it's Bucky's is where I went Boom. to first. Okay. Bucky's like is that. where yes. I went to first. <laughs> Can't lose with Bucky's, but I will say that those of you who picked HEB, definitely that was number one on my list. Mm -hmm. It's very practical because we got we need to go grocery shopping uh -huh. and stuff. My parents are going to knock that trip out for me though, because again, it's just been kind of crazy. <laughs> nice. And we're yeah. officially here, yeah. settled. Next week, I will go in there with bells and whistles on though. There you go. <laughs> so it was D, none of the above. None of the above. And I know uh, some people was just question. like, man, y'all tricked us on that. Y'all ain't even have an option there. But fortunately, this ain't no contest for yeah. money or anything yeah, like no. that. We weren't going to get y'all like Bucky's that. Bucky's, that, that's a great one, though. <laughs> and you said you kind of just, Solid. people watched a little mm -hmm. bit out there. It's a stuff. great yeah. experience. You're walking mm -hmm. in, not only, obviously, the bathrooms, but again, like I told <laughs> last <laughs> hour, it's like they got this thing down like a Chick-fil-A science. People, it's just chaos in there, but yeah. you are getting in and out. Mm -hmm. And when you walk out, you're just like, I didn't even get anything because I had the best experience of my life. <laughs> so, yeah. So I got some Bucky's. socks from there the other day. I, yeah? I'm just like going through clothes mm -hmm. and everything there. About Maybe get a, a brisket set. I did some of those 4th of July socks. Socks. Check this Bucky out. The Beaver. Yes. I got one of those tube things, the little floaty <laughs> yeah. tube things. Oh, yeah, it was so cool, time. so I can use that, especially yeah, with these high go. temperatures. Yeah, you could, <laughs> for sure. So HEB, ultimately, that will be at the top of the list. As we get a quick look, y'all, traffic real quick. Check out our TransGuy traffic cameras and take a look at your traffic authority, 37410 southeast side. Traffic moving along pretty good both directions there as we see a shot of the Tower of the Americas right there, 37 at the Alamo Dome there as 
well. Let's go ahead and check out our shot from drive cam here real quick. And uh, Alex Gomez, he's on the roads for us uh, this morning and things looking pretty good out there where Alex is at. Again, we will continue to check in with him in just a little bit on your Monday morning. But I think, you know what? Jaffney, Justin mm. has a little bit more of some uh, trivia for us coming up here. Oh, we're just, really going to keep the trivia going. And this okay, one does yes. not have D, none of the above. So. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and check in with Justin. Just, just prepare yourself here. So here's the question. Mm. Uh, we're headed into what you would call the dog days of summer. So yeah. where does that come from? Does it come from the, the term itself? Does it come from an ancient tree, an actual dog, a uh, constellation, or a Greek god? What do you think? Uh, Ooh, I man, this is a tough one. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, so I on. am I again. He's making our brains work on a full disclosure. <laughs> I, I am not good at trivia, but I'm going to say a Greek god. Because, okay, and I only say that because okay. I did the story before, and there is something that I learned. They named their tattoo shop, shop Sun Dog, okay. and I figured oh. out that was something dealing with like kind of like a cute little halo. Either way, don't it's quote me guess. on this. It's a very good guess, <laughs> RJ. Uh, I go C. You know what? When in doubt, just go C. Multiple choice. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're yeah. right, RJ. You're very wow, close. That was a guess. Oh, that was look a guess. at that. Yes. <laughs> uh, it is a constellation, so it has to do with the star Sirius, which is known as the Dog Star. Oh. Or you the, were the brightest though. star in the sky, yeah. and it's part of Canis Majoris, which is, you know, named after the dog. Uh, it became known as a precursor to summer heat, especially in Greece. So you weren't too far off with the Greek god thing. Yay! Uh, yeah, so there you go. There's where the dog days of summer come from, and we are headed right into it, uh, the way things are looking. High pressure in the upper levels is keeping things very toasty. Look at Vegas and Phoenix. They're still above 110 later today. Uh, Abilene 101 will be around 98. It only gets hotter from here as that high pressure moves a little bit closer. Let's check in on Debbie. Yes, it did make landfall. It's Category 1 hurricane. Winds are at 80 miles per hour right now. Weakens today as it moves inland, but here is the problem. It starts to really slow down. And by the way, it moves back out over the Atlantic. Hopefully, we don't get any redevelopment. Uh, but we do know that it's going to bring a lot of heavy rain to parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, and maybe even eventually Virginia uh, with some of this uh, heavy, heavy rain. We're talking 15 inches plus. There are some indications we can get 15 to 20 inches here along the coast uh, from Georgia up to South Carolina. So that's going to be a big problem. A lot of flooding, uh, catastrophic in some cases, and uh, especially in Florida today, uh, they're going to see a ton of rain. We are hardly seeing any clouds. It's 77 here in San Antonio right now, 75 New Braunfels, 78 in Converse, and uh, we don't have much wind out there. I mentioned the ridge of high pressure kind of wobbles around a little bit, but it has enough uh, influence on our forecast to keep things very warm. And in fact, by Thursday and Friday, it moves closer. So triple digits are a good bet, not only here in San Antonio, but across a large portion of the south. And uh, that'll also be the case on Friday. This says 100. I think it's probably a little hotter than that. The way things are looking, uh, we're forecasting 102 by Thursday and Friday here in San Antonio. Heat index will still be in that 100 to 105 range because humidity comes down a little bit. So it's kind of a trade-off, uh, but the heat will be there. There's no doubt about it. And we go above average as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 101 Wednesday, 102 Thursday, and Friday. What about rain? Uh, not in the forecast. There is a very, very small chance of a shower today, but not likely. Uh, lots of sun as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then mostly sunny as we head into the weekend. Staying hot all the way through. Seven-day forecast, guys. All right. Thanks so much, Justin. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is that time of year again. All of our kiddos out there super excited because it's back to school again. <laughs> Season is here. And for kids at Lavernia ISD, today is the actual first day going back. Yeah. Cannot believe that. Even the kiddos <laughs> that are not going back to school, they're like, oh my oh, God, here I'm we next. go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, our Devin Carp, he has been hanging out for us outside Ooh. of Lavernia Primary School before the doors even open out mm -hmm. there. Devin, it looked like they were having a party out there, had some music going on. Devin, with everything that's going on, what do parents need to know out there this morning? Oh yeah, RJ, Steph, good morning. Glad to have you back with us, Jaffney. Now, we were actually able to get some exclusive early access inside of Lavernia Primary, right here in the cafeteria, where soon 800 kiddos are gonna get ready to start school this year. And I'm actually standing next to some of Lavernia's finest. First off, you guys excited for the start of school? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Would you mind introducing yourself really quick? Yes, I'm Shelly Keck. I'm the primary principal. Fantastic. I'm Krista Salter. I'm the librarian here. And I'm Deb Walton, and I'm the library assistant. Fantastic. All right, so I know you guys have been working hard all summer. What do students have to look forward to as they get started for the first day of school this year? 
Oh my goodness, we are so excited. Um, our theme this year is learning is an adventure. And so here at Laverne Primary, our custodians, maintenance, teachers, transportation have been working hard for the last week or so, getting everything ready to welcome our students this morning. So know that they have some adventures ahead for them. Fantastic. And I know that y'all first implemented the four day school week last year. That's going again this year, is that right? Oh yes, we had so many successes last year. Um, we saw improved attendance, improved achievement, and we're gonna capitalize on those successes um, going into this year as well. Fantastic, so I know you guys as the librarians are getting ready for the students to come back. What would you say is the best thing about having the kiddos back in the building? <laughs> the best thing is sharing our love of reading with every single, single kiddo. We get to see all 800 kiddos from pre-K to second, and it's so very exciting. Fantastic. Well, some, all right, some of the logistic details that parents need to know. So the car drop off line, that's going to start this morning at about 645. Now doors are going to open up for the school at around seven, but don't be late. That tardy bell is at 725. Now, if there are any parents who want to walk their kids to that first day of school, they can do so starting at seven. Now for the car pickup, that line is going to start at 340. Now to get in, you need to make sure you have that orange car pickup tag in your car. Now pre-K and kindergarten the pickup is going to be on the gym side as far as everyone else that's going to be at the front of the school and we've got this kiddos coming in all right are you guys excited to get everyone in the building and finally get to teaching again oh my goodness yes. we can't <laughs> wait let's go bears go yes bears. go bears we're ready for the hugs yes Fantastic. All right, RJ, Jaffney, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you. But coming up at 630, we're going to hear from some of the students themselves who are getting ready for that first day. And I don't think they'll be too upset about it, but we'll just have to wait and see. Back to you guys in Laverne. I'm Devin Karp, KSAT 12. All right, let's go Bears. <laughs> yes, let's go Lavernia <laughs> Bears representing out there mm -hmm. on the Far East Side. And I love the fact that he talked to the librarians right. too, because, you know, again, Everyone has a big impact on these kids' lives. Amen. Yes. All right, guys. 620. I cannot believe it is already 620. Time is flying. We're having a good time. Good morning, San Antonio. <laughs> 79 degrees outside. Just ahead, Google has pulled its new Gemini AI Olympics ad after backlash from viewers on social media. That's next in your GMA First Look. Dan made progress with his mental health, but his medication caused unintentional movements in his face, hands, and feet called tardive dyskinesia, or TD. So his doctor prescribed Osteto XR, a once daily extended release TD treatment for adults. As you go with Osteto. Osteto XR significantly reduced Dan's TD movements. Some people saw a response as early as two weeks. With Osteto XR, Dan can stay on his mental health meds. Cool hair. Osteto XR can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, or have suicidal thoughts. Don't take if you have liver problems, are taking reserpine, tetrabenazine, or valbenazine. Osteto XR may cause irregular or fast heartbeat or abnormal movements. Seek help for fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, or sweating. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. As you go Ask your doctor for Osteto XR. In this morning's GMA First Look, Google pulling its AI-generated Olympic ad after going viral for the wrong reasons. And I'm pretty good with words, but this has to be just right. Viewers upset when a father and daughter use the AI tool called Gemini to write a heartfelt letter to an Olympic hero. For most of the, the ad, the hero is the dad and the daughter neither of which have a name, by the way. And then all of a sudden we turn to Gemini and Gemini has a name and Gemini is there to draft the the letter. And we never really see the girl interacting with the letter. She doesn't edit it. She doesn't transcribe it on into her own handwriting. So it, it seems like Gemini is the hero. Uh, and we don't want AI to be the hero. Humans have to provide the magic. And coming up at 7 a.m., this isn't the only tech ad sparking backlash. We'll tell what it could all mean for AI going forward. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. All right, today we are officially welcoming Jaffney back to Yay. the 210 San Antonio. <laughs> and good morning, San Antonio. Yes, yes. good morning. We're guys. excited to have you back, Jaffney. Welcome back. Feels like just good old times. Oh, yeah. yeah. But like I, like I said, I never left, man. Yes, we're, we're, yeah. we're picking up right off where we left. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and last week we asked a bunch of questions to our viewers about the one and only Jaffney Gray right here. Mm. Today we are getting some of those answers. So one of the questions that we asked our viewers is, what is Jaffney? 
Company's go-to drink in San Antonio, and I think we have an official answer right mm -hmm. here. <laughs> so our hear. viewers said 44% sweet tea, but... Ooh, shakalaka. Here you go, where's my advertise? Where's my camera? Here we go. Topo Chico. You guys, yes. you want to be refreshed. Here's your bottle of Topo Chico. Just take a... There you go. Sip like that. Is. Now, again, I absolutely love Topo Chico. Funny mm -hmm. story about that. I bought a ton of these mm -hmm. before I moved to Roanoke, Virginia, yeah. because I feared that they wouldn't have Topo Chico in Roanoke, Virginia. Mm -hmm. But I bought so many <laughs> that I finished my last bottle of Topo Chico bought Man. two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. two weeks ago. How Man. did you fit all those Man. cases in your car? <laughs> it was, I, well, you know, I, I was just like, I'm not going to let going. it go. But yeah, hey, no, uh, sweet tea is a good <laughs> option. But again, Topo Chico, you can't lose it. Back. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah, and I know you collect the bottle caps too, I right? Do. I'm, I'm a weird person. Y'all yeah. know that. <laughs> Time now is 626. Of course, we're in the upper 70s still right now. We so. are 77. Yeah. There we go. All right. And we are giving you a live look right now at Drive Cam. Photojournalist Alex Gomez looks like he's stuck in a little bit of traffic. So we'll try and get this situation figured out coming up. And we'll check in with Justin right after the break. It is 6.30 on a Monday morning out there. The beautiful city of San Antonio, we're giving you a live look right now. Yay. Live cam across the city. The summer heat is here. Mm -hmm. Jaff is here as well. We've been talking about this for some time now. Yes, good morning, San Antonio. It is now 6.30 on your Monday. This is August 5th. And for some kids, first day back to school, but we're in that season right now. Yes, so. and we were saying that's kind of the vibe that we have a little yep. bit right here. First day with Jaffney back, a little bit of, uh, of butter flies. Mm -hmm. I was having a little bit of trouble sleeping last night knowing no that you were going to be back with us. Zero sleep. I've been up and I'm just like, let's go. So yeah, we're super excited to be yes, back. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Uh, talking about back to school stuff. Well, first of all, Jaffney, Okay, you got a surprise for us. I got us. a fun story. So <laughs> yeah. check this out. When I was leaving San Antonio, or leaving, yeah, San Antonio to go to Roanoke, you know, obviously my parents were very upset about that. But when we were making our return, I didn't tell them until like literally I signed the dotted line. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to do. My mom's birthday was June the 28th, and I decided that I was going to surprise her through a cake. So as you can see on the screen right now <laughs> is a cake with several of my goofy pictures. And yep. on it, it reads a particular message. It says we're going back to San Antonio. So the way I gave it to mom, I had gave her her a card as well and in that card I typically always say look mom God has our back mm -hmm. I just need you to continue to trust me and speaking of trusting me guess what dot 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 and here's her reaction we're going back to San Antonio <laughs> <laughs> <Wait now. laughs> well I am now the new anchor for good morning San Antonio <laughs> Mom is yeah. so proud oh of you. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love her dad. Mom, do not hate me for showing this <laughs> yeah, video. I think it's the cutest right video ever. I hope she is. Uh, and then we had to FaceTime my dad in. So he looked at you see him smiling ear to ear. They were very, very super duper excited about that. And we're all happy to be back. They're at home right now, uh, just chilling on vacation. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so right now, of course they know that yeah. the temperatures are pretty high, <laughs> yeah. Justin. I can't tell you how much I love that video. That was great. So yeah, amazing. Was great. Yeah. Happy belated yeah. birthday to your mom, by the way. Yes. Uh, that is that is so cool. Love and by mom. the way, I'm sh I think your, your dog Bo's glad to be back. Tonight. Oh yes, 1000%. <laughs> yeah. He's like, here we go, mama, we're back. Yeah. We're back in Alamo City. Oh, uh, it's great stuff, Japanese. Welcome back. Welcome back. And as we look at the rainfall totals from yesterday, we got some rain around the area. It was all west of San Antonio. But when you estimate it from the radar, we're talking two to three inches in some cases. So our friends out in Bandera, out near Lake Econcan, uh, even down towards Hondo, we got good rain yesterday. We didn't see it here in San Antonio, unfortunately, but at least there was some rain somewhere in the viewing area. And this was the, some of the pictures we were seeing. This was around Kennedy. Uh, you can see kind of a dying thunderstorm there, but a beautiful, beautiful shot from Sandy. And unfortunately, our rain chances are going away. We're starting to see the heat really kick up today. 90. Uh, by noontime, we'll be up around 98 this afternoon. And this is just sort of the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. That's probably not the best <laughs> term to use because the heat is going to be on later this week. 
More triple digits are in the forecast. We'll talk about it, and we'll talk about the latest with Debbie coming up in just a couple minutes. But we got to talk traffic now. What's going on out there, RJ? All right, uh, Justin, things looking okay for the most part. Do have a stalled vehicle, Loop 410 Marbach Road, and there's also 1604 eastbound at Northwest Military Highways. We get a look at our cameras there, 1604 and Green Mountain Road. Let's go ahead and check in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. He is hitting the streets for us on a Monday morning. Alex, happy Monday to you, my friend. It looks like you got a nice little sunrise going there. How are things looking? Yeah, beautiful sunrise that's about to come out, probably because Jaffney is back this morning, RJ. <laughs> so check out the view again over here on the northeast side, 35 northbound right in front of Rotama Park. And let's not forget, this is the this is the road, 35 north, that takes you to Bucky's in New Braunfels. <laughs> so I hear that's Jaffney's spot as well, RJ. Hey. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Cannot go wrong with a quick trip to the Bucky's out there. And Jaffney already, yeah, definitely hit up the Bucky's. Mm -hmm. as she made her way back to the San Antonio area. Thank you very much, Alex, for checking things out for us this morning on Drive Cam and be careful out there as we take a look at some of the streets here in the San Antonio area. Thank you very much, Alex. All right, so we've been talking a lot about this. Back to school. Yes. Cannot believe this. Of course, it is August. That means that it is coming around again. Yep. Back to school season. Lavernia ISD, shout out to the Bears. They are kicking <laughs> it off by welcoming students back to school this morning. Mm -hmm. Our very own Devin Carb is at Lavernia Primary School right now. Students arrive. Devin, good morning. You've worked your way inside of the building. And like I said, you're still looking sharp to death today, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jaffney. By the way, great to have you with us on GMS8. Now we got that early KSAT exclusive access into the school here at Lavernia Primary. Now I've actually got not only the mascot here, say hi, <laughs> but I have got some of Lavernia's finest students. I have with me Sloan, Emery, and Claire. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Are you guys excited for school? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. All right. So what is your most favorite part of the first day of school? What are you guys excited about? I'm excited about uh, recess. Recess. Oh, that's a good one. I miss recess too. What about you? I'm excited to make new friends. Wow. Awesome. I'm excited about art. Art. I love it. You guys ready for the first day? Yes. Oh, you going to make some new friends? Yes. yes. Awesome, fantastic. So we've got going on here. School is going to start at 7 o'clock for these kiddos. The tardy bell is going to happen at 725. Now drop off starts at about 645. So any of those kids can start to line up in the car line here. Pickup's going to be at about 340. And you need to make sure you have that orange tag in your car for any parents picking up. Pre-K and kindergarten is going to be on the gym side of the school while everyone else is going to be right up front. We've got a lot of classes coming forward. 800 kiddos getting ready to come to school for this year. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to you, RJ and Jaffney, live in Lavernia. I'm Devin Carp, KSAT 12 News. All right, yes, I love those kids' answers there. Said, Art, good friends, and recess. That, I'm telling Boom. you, that's, that, they're that's my best friends right there. There you go. <laughs> All right, speaking of back to school, hey, check this out. We're also taking you to the gridiron at the stroke of midnight. This was really cool. It was official start of high school football season, Woo -woo. and our photojournalist, Mark Mendez, talked to him a little while ago. He was out at Holy Cross to catch the Knights as they hit the field for the first time. Then Mark actually made his way out to Lytle, checking out the Pirates as they took took some snaps as they get set for the 2024 yes. football season. Yes, Javney football <laughs> right around the corner. Love it. And a reminder, the 2024 KSAT Pixie Classic is changing gears. There will be only one game this year. This is going to be the Bernie Greyhounds taking on the Piper Warriors Thursday, August 29th, 7 p.m. You can watch this game live right now on KSAT 12 on August 29th. And you can read more about the KSAT Pixie Classic, get more information on the big game coverage page of ksat.com. All right, back to school, football starting, a lot of excitement out there. Definitely. The fight to protect the Edwards Aquifer from possible pollution is moving forward in Austin this month. And this issue is around the Guadalajote Ranch property, which is located about two miles north of Gray Forest. An interested developer is asking the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to grant it a wastewater permit, plant permit, excuse me. And this is a story that we've been following for several summers now. Patty Santos has been keeping a close watch on these latest developments.
area. Mm -hmm. So it goes. We have uh, asked to contest the permit for the wastewater plant. This month, we're closer to finding out the answer to that request. Behind the fight is the nonprofit, the Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance, representing hundreds of property owners. They are asking the state for a special hearing to explain why the permit should be denied. The property is about five miles north of Halotus. Leonard Holmes has plans to build a subdivision with thousands of homes, but it needs a wastewater plant and permission by the TCEQ to dump millions of gallons of treated wastewater into the Halotus Creek. The creek is in the recharge zone for the Trinity Glen Rose Aquifer and the Edwards Aquifer Contributing Zone near the recharge zone. Opponents argue that any pollution that enters our water system could impact all of us. We would like to see uh, more conservation easements purchased. I mean, the city has done a lot, but according to the studies, uh, the threat of high density subdivisions and the threat from wastewater and polluted stormwater uh, is still very real for the Edwards, so we've got some more work to do in order to protect our water supply. On August 14th, the TCEQ Commission will meet in Austin to hear the request by the developer for the permit and the request by those opposing it in what's known as a contested hearing. The Guajalote Ranch property is owned by the Huntress family. The meeting is at 9.30 a.m. The public can listen in but will not be allowed to comment. You can listen in to the meeting. We will post the link on KSAT.com. All right, and it's important to point out that the purchase of the property by Lenore Holmes is still pending, waiting on this mm -hmm. permit to be approved. So this is not a done deal, and uh, the work has not started on that property yet. Yeah, right. definitely doing a lot of reporting on that, Patty, as long as as well as Justin mm -hmm. on this uh, property and those Gray Forest folks, you know, trying to kind of go back and forth with some of the development out there. All right. Yeah. Time now is 640. Of course, we're looking at some upper 70s as temperature. We also got to take a look right now outside with live cam. Good morning, guys. It's time to get up. We see that sun is rising. Hope you guys have a wonderful start to your week. But it kind of went, you know, it took on a life of its own. It's just, uh, it's something that was totally unexpected. All right, you hear the man there from the Memorial Day Miracle to the first Spurs championship. Sean Elliott won the hearts of fans during his playing and broadcasting days right here in the Alamo City. But his recent heart scare had his fans talking about and sharing their concern for the Spurs legend. While well, Sean met with me the other day to discuss this recent procedure to shock his heart back into rhythm, and he shared a message that he has for his fans and those who have questions about atrial fibrillation. And my watch kept telling me you're in atrial fibrillation. They just kept telling me over and over again. And I said, there's no way, I feel fine. And That's how Spurs great Sean Elliott learned that he was suffering from an irregular heartbeat. Uh, thank goodness I was wearing my watch because Imagine going a month or two with AFib and not knowing it because it wasn't going away once it was diagnosed. Elliot said that he felt fine, but his Apple Watch just kept warning him that something was wrong. Four or five days, it just blew it off. But one morning, it just was really adamant and told me two or three times. And I said, okay, I'm going to call Dr. Triana. His longtime cardiologist, Dr. Fernando Triana from Methodist Hospital, told Sean that he needed to see him immediately. AFib is uh, probably the most common uh, irregularity of the heartbeat in the United States. Mm -hmm. Probably eight to nine million Americans live with uh, chronic uh, atrial fibrillation. Symptoms for AFib include chest pain, dizziness, fatigue, and shortness of breath. Now, Sean told us that he wasn't feeling any of these, but not treating the condition could lead to serious problems and blood clots. Once the blood clot is formed in mm -hmm. that uh, chamber, it goes into the other chambers of the heart, and it has the possibility of traveling to the body. Elliot went to the hospital and had a successful procedure called a cardioversion to get his heart back into rhythm. And get this, Dr. Triana's daughter, Dr. Taylor Triana, did the procedure, making this a family affair. And if there's no blood clot, we then proceed with a cardioversion. The whole procedure takes about 30 minutes, and then we monitor them in recovery for about another 30 minutes. After that, the patient can go home. Sean was good to go. His wife, Claudia, posted the good news on Instagram, and he received a ton of messages on his watch, nonetheless, from friends, family, and his NBA colleagues. And I was home that night. Uh, at the end of that reel, my wife Claudia is bringing me a big giant plate of chicken because I wasn't allowed to eat all day and I was starving. And so I was back to normal. I played golf the next Albine, day. Albine, why was it important for you to sit down with us and talk about uh, this as well? I, I trust medical science. You know, obviously with a kidney transplant, uh, you know, I'm 
living, breathing proof of what medical technology can do for you, stay on top of it. Go get yourself checked or make sure uh, you're not an aphid like I was. Again, I had absolutely no idea. Sean says that he's already back on the golf course and ready to go back to the Spurs broadcast booth. I'm just thrilled to be uh, healthy right now and really looking forward to next year because there are going to be uh, great things to come. I promise you that. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Oh, yeah, he was excited about the Spurs, but of course, his health being the priority there. And Sean always talks out, talks, uh, speaks out about health issues mm -hmm. with his kidney disease and also AFib now. You know, I'm a firm believer in things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And for this big name to be tied to this kind of condition mm -hmm. is making a part of a conversation now. So Absolutely. bring some awareness out there. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much to Sean and the doctors there at Methodist for coming through here and sharing that story with us. Let's get a quick check of the roads right now as we take a look at our travel. Traffic Authority trans guy cameras. We mentioned 1604 had a crash there earlier, but it looks like things are looking pretty good out there. 281 at Borgfield. So let's go to check in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. He is hitting the roads for us on drive cam. Alex, how are things looking? It looks like you got a little bit of construction where you are at, my man. How are things looking? <laughs> it seems like everywhere there's going to be a little bit of construction, but you know what? This is going to be on the far north side, 1604 westbound, right at Redland Road. This area seems to be doing good even for a Monday morning. Happy Monday, RJ. Yes, happy Monday to you too there as well. 1604 Northwest Military, that is where they are reporting an accident, but smooth sailing right there for Alex out there in drive cam. All right, Justin, man, it was hot this weekend. So <laughs> hot. <laughs> As so, Jaffney is made, she knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stuck that. in some traffic. <laughs> oh, 1,000%. You're dealing with that and Debbie. <laughs> yes. oh, um, by the way, RJ, great story. Oh, thank I, you. I, I, I never know if I really like my Apple Watch. Now I think that I do. Hey, right? yes. It's going to tell me stuff like that. Uh, clouds and rain. This is Debbie. This is what we're looking at. So it has made landfall this morning in the coastal bend here of Florida. Uh, this is packing a punch. Winds of 80 miles per hour is producing a ton of rain. It's category 1 hurricane. It's going to continue to move off to the north northeast. Here Herein lies the problem. As it does, it's going to stall here along uh, the eastern coast of the United States. So Georgia, South Carolina could see 15 to 20 inches of rainfall. Uh, I think it's going to be the biggest takeaway from this storm. But Florida is getting walloped this morning with winds, storm surge, and rain. And then it becomes a huge rainmaker. Uh, so if you have plans to travel uh, to the east coast, know that this will interrupt some of those plans, may cause some travel delays. As we've got set for you right now, beautiful sunrises. Alex pointed out 77 degrees at the airport right now. We've got low 70s for Bernie and Kerrville. It's this ridge of high pressure. It's going to be the big weather maker this week. It moves over Texas, and uh, that creates some big time heat. We're expecting temperatures to be up around 100 on Tuesday, 101 Wednesday. And as that high pressure moves over top of us by Thursday and Friday, uh, we're looking at highs in the low 100s, so 102 both days. And then 100 Saturday, 99 on Sunday. Uh, we could see heat indices anywhere from 100 to 105. And uh, thankfully, humidity goes down a little bit during the afternoon. But the big story this week is going to be the heat and the lack of rainfall as well. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, 6.53, we are getting things going here on a Monday morning. And, of course, welcoming Jaff yes. back to San Antonio. And good morning, San Antonio. Good and morning. last week, Jaff, we asked a series of trivia questions mm -hmm. about you right here. Yeah. Since this is your first day back with us. Mm -hmm. And today we are getting some of those answers. And, of course, this is a hotly debated <laughs> issue across all of San Antonio. Look, we know that San Antonio's got the best breakfast tacos. But yes. we want to know what was your to-go taco order. Mm -hmm. We had three choices here okay. potato and egg bean and cheese or chorizo and egg most people guess chorizo and egg Javni guess let what? the folks know what's up out of all these trivia questions this is the one that they did get <laughs> right all day long and by the fact I got one sitting in the refrigerator waiting on me Ooh, so I okay. can't wait to get my hands on it prepared. oh 1000% but I do have a good question for you oh, okay. what is my favorite lunch slash dinner taco Ooh, okay. I know last uh, week Alex said carne guisada was that's one. A good one. I like a good fajita taco. Uh -huh. Give me some good like beef yeah. or chicken like a, fajita. A street taco. Mm -hmm. Those are good. I'm yes. all about Felipe. 
Oh, wow. Yes, okay, now I you really am. Are. <laughs> Three bag, get the lot. Look, I'm about to start salivating. I'm telling you, I'm all about now it. You're man. I'm, I'm happy to be back 1000%. The food, everything. I got to be careful. Got to be careful. So I got to find me a gym immediately because y'all about to mess me up. <laughs> yeah, so we learned earlier. Okay, so go to drink was Tobo Chico. Yeah, here we go. The first place she went to was Bucky's. It was not on our trivia list, but yeah. Bucky's was the answer. But that was a good one. Parents are going to take care of the ATB trip for me soon, though. Definitely got to do that. The taco. Yes. Y'all got yeah. me, man. Y'all got yeah. me down pat. <laughs> <laughs> got you figured out now. Mm -hmm. Well, we are glad to have you back and ready for this next adventure of Good Morning San Antonio. And this, these two hours just flew by. Yeah, yeah. 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 We've been clowning, y'all. <laughs> We've been having a good time. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, guys. Trans guy, traffic cameras. One quick last check before you step outside before our seven o'clock hour. And things are again are looking pretty good. 1604 Gold Canyon traffic moving along pretty good both directions. The only thing that I noticed was a little bit of issues there, 1604 Northwest Military Highway, but for the most part, y'all, everything looking good. It's because they're all obviously excited about Jaffney. Come everyone behaving <laughs> yeah. themselves Everybody's being on good. the roads this morning. Watch what I get home, or on my way home, we all just start clowning on the roadway. <laughs> we sitting yeah, out there yeah, for yeah, a while. <laughs> Justin. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jeff. These uh, these temperatures, it's not nice to welcome you with this kind of weather. <laughs> hey, it is what it is uh, at this point. It is what it is. Uh, early <laughs> August, uh, temperatures will be in the triple digits this week, so we're going to add to that triple digit number. We've had 12 triple digit days so far this year. We're going to add to that this week. I feel like it's almost a certainty, especially by Thursday and Friday. Uh, the good news is humidity comes down a little bit during the afternoon, so it's kind of a trade off. We're not going to have the extreme heat index values, but hot is hot is hot, right? Mm -hmm. And we were spoiled mm -hmm. in July. You yeah. weren't here for it, but we got a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. now it's, uh, it's all coming to an end, at least this week. All right. Well, yes. Stay hydrated. Go out there and get you a Topo Chico. Get some Topo. Yeah. Yes, Topo Chico, refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right.